Hi everybody, Paul Gallagher. What I wanted to talk about in this video is um, is, is is split toning with the black and white image. Um, we've got an image in front of us. It was taken in Hokkaido in Japan, and we got this kind of big snow drift, almost swallowing up this this little fence line, and a big dark storm cloud in the background. And the reason why I wanted to cover split toning is because it's all pretty much changed with the latest release of Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. And if you split tone in these particular environments, it will look quite different. Uh, when we look down our menu bar here, we can see split toning isn't there anymore. And it's been replaced by this here, which is called color grading. So I'm going to left click on that arrow there. And when you do that, you will be faced with three colored globes effectively. We've got the usual suspects, which you would expect to find. We've got shadows and highlights. But with the newer version, we've got mid-tones to play with as well. For this image, I'm just going to do shadows and highlights a bit like we, I've done with other videos in the past. So basically what you've got is you've got the three colored globes and you can effectively grab hold of one of this dot in the center there and kind of move it around on you and you can place it wherever you want. Now, when I tried this when I first used it, it was a bit flippant and it started jumping around everywhere. It was a bit too fast moving for my liking. And so I tried to avoid using these tiny little three individual colored globes. If you tried that and you want to get it back to neutral, just go to the dot in the middle and double click. Okay, now the image is black back to monochrome and black and white. Now, the way to look at, take a closer look at this, if we go to color grading at the top here, we can see there's a number of different symbols and we've got adjust here and it shows you a thumbnail of three, the similar to the three color globes here. To the right of that, it's got one for shadows there, one for mid-tones and one for highlights. So it's highlights and shadows we're going to be using. I'm going to begin with shadows. I'm going to click on that. And what you'll find is that the shadows globe now becomes much bigger and to navigate and move and adjust, it's a lot easier to use. Now, if it's the first time you're doing this, your screen or this palette here may look like this. You might just be faced with luminance, blending and balance, and some of the functionality may be missing. What you've got to do is where we've got our colored globe there, we've got a little arrow on this side, left click on that and it gives you more functionality. And it's some of the functionality we've been used to in the past with when we had split split tone in the past. We've got hue, saturation and luminance to play around with as well. So how do we use it? Well, we can use the slider here. And as we use the slider, you'll see there's a little ball that goes around the outside of the main globe, indicating more accurately than in the past what exactly, exactly what color you're hovering over and what color you're going to apply. OK, but you can also grab hold of this and slide it round and you'll see the hue slider following the colors accordingly as you'd expect okay um now we can to apply the color to your particular image we can click on saturation and we can do that and what you'll see is it's moving from the center white points in the shadow in the shadows color globe and it follows a direct line straight towards the ball on the outside. And as it does so, it intensifies the saturation of that color. OK, you can also do it if we hold the shift key down on the keyboard, you'll see its direction of travel. And you can also do it by clicking, holding the shift key, clicking and dragging this along. And we can see the shadows of the image becoming more intensely blue or less intensely blue. That's the closer to the center you go. OK. So I'm going to kind of put the blues round about there, round about there. And obviously you could do it with either the slider or holding the shift key and moving the circle around within the colored globe itself. OK, so there we, we've applied a blue to the darker tones in the image. That's exactly what we've done. I'm going to move on now to highlights. So that was our shadows there. And we're going to move to highlights. You'll notice when it's active because the actual dot with the right shadows has got a white circle around it there. When we move over to here, which is highlights on this one, when we click on it, there'll be a white circle goes around the highlights. And now what we've got is a new colored globe. And we've got the same functionality. So for me, really, if I, if I get hold of the hue slider, I want the, the, the highlights to be slightly warm. So I'll slide this across and when I get to, I don't know, round about, round about 50-ish, somewhere like that, 
I'll start applying the saturation of that particular colour and we'll see the snow in the image, the highlights are looking warmer. So we've introduced two colours to the image itself. We've got the warm colours in the snow, which we can see there, and the cool colours of the blues in the dark sky. But can we? there's further functionality we can use here. We've got luminance. And effectively what luminance does is we're in the highlights, we're still in the highlights here. So what luminance will do here is it will brighten the areas of the image that contain our particular yellow, the yellow we chose. So we get all the luminance there and go right the way across. So we can push it. We can see the snow in the foreground getting brighter. Okay. I will leave that where it is in the middle for now. We go back to shadows. It's exactly the same with shadows. Okay. We can either darken the shadowed areas and we can see the sky going darker there, the blues in the sky or the blues in the sky going brighter. Okay, so you can kind of selectively alter the tones by using the colours you apply to the shadows or the highlights. And shadows and highlights is ever so slightly misleading because this isn't really a shadow, it's just a dark tone in the image. So if it says shadows or highlights, it's dark and light tones realistically. But I want to come back to the highlights here because we understand what hue is, it's the colour that you're choosing to put in the shadows or highlights or mid-tones if you have an image that you want to do that with. Uh, we don't know what the hue is, but also the saturation is the intensification of that particular colour. And we know luminance either brightens the tones that that colour sat on or lowers the tones that colour has been applied to and sat on. But now we've got blending, we've got balance. So what exactly is blending and balance? Blending is the way it transitions from one colour tone to another. So for example, with the sky here, we've got yellows over here because this is a paler tone. So this is a highlight in a sense and it's applied the yellow to there. As we come across to here, we're going into blues because this is the shadows or the darker tones in the image. And so if we slide blend into the right, what we'll see is quite a hard transition between the blues and the yellows. They're not mixing, there's a, it's a bit, quite an abrupt transition between the blues and the yellows, they're keeping quite separate. If we move the blending to the left of centre, it makes that transition smoother. So you've got a smoother transition from the dark shadows here into the paler yellows here. So you can alter that, that transition quite carefully, which is really useful functionality if you want to make the split tone nice and subtle and not too obvious. So that's blending the transition between the two colours and now that the behaviour of that transition from a highlight colour to a shadow colour. What's balance? Well, it's straightforward. All this balance does is give dominance to either the shadow colour or the highlight colour, in our case, the yellows or the blues. <clears throat> so if I slide balance to the right here, it's going to give dominance. We can see straight away to the yellows and the blues start sinking back and going away into the distance. If I do the opposite and bring it Back, double click to bring it back into the center into back to zero there which you can see and if i go to the left with the balance now the dominant color is towards the dark tones which is the blues and therefore the dominant color in the image becomes the blues okay so there's plenty of functionality to try and also once again we haven't done it with this image but in terms of split tone in black and white images you could use mid-tones as well I generally use highlights and shadows together, but the functionality you've got and the blending and the balance is really quite a powerful tool. And it's a really good step change from what we had in the past with the old split tone in functionality in Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom. So I hope you found the video useful. Enjoy, go away and try. And remember, you can't break it. Just have a go with any of your images. Thanks for listening.